On the quick start screen of PhotoPaint, if we click New Blank Document, similar to Corel Draw, we can set up the parameters of our document. In fact, what we're really doing is setting up the DPI of the final image we're going to create. No longer are we dealing with vector lines and their fills, but rather we're dealing with DPI dots per inch. 72 would be suitable to display on a computer screen or in some cases on the web. However, if you're dealing with a level of professional photography, 300 DPI would be more recommended. I would also recommend for photography work, remain in the 24-bit RGB space. Well, I'm sure you'll understand the rest, so let's move on. We said earlier that Corel Draw is a line-based or vector-based program and that we can add fills to the objects we create, etc. With the added advantage of, we can work with bitmaps. However, if you think of PhotoPaint as the reverse, we are now working with bitmaps primarily with the added advantage of we can add lines and shapes, etc. If I select, for example, the zoom tool and zoom in very, very closely to this image here, you'll see lots of little squares. And if you look closely, every square has a color in it, and we call that a pixel. So earlier on, when we set up our page and we said 300 DPI, we were really saying we want 300 of these little dots in every square inch. And that is what we call the resolution. Now, to demonstrate this, I'll select my rectangle tool here in the toolbox. As with Corel Draw, when you select a tool, the property bar will update with parameters that you can work with and hints will do the same thing. In fact, the menu system and all of the bars very much work the same as Corel Draw. Well, right now, I'm simply going to click and drag and create a long rectangle, release my mouse, and what you'll see is a rectangle with a blue fill and a black outline. And also you can see these blue marching ants. The blue marching ants are what we call an object marquee. Up here on the standard toolbar, I can actually turn this off and I will do that for the rest of this. Notice the color and the outline are represented here in these color swatches. Well, first of all, the first color swatch at the top we call the foreground color. It will always affect the outline color of any object we create. And the swatch at the bottom is the fill, and this will determine the fill, of course. Here is where we are different to Corel Draw. I can't simply create an object, and once I'm finished, select my object and go click on any of the color worlds to change the color. I must make this decision before creating the object. Let's do this again. This time, I'll select the Ellipse tool. With my ellipse tool selected, on the property bar, I can change the outline thickness to say 10, and remember we're working with pixels. Now to change these colors, I can simply double click on the foreground swatch, and I'll choose the color red, click OK. Similarly, double click on the fill. Now with fill, we have a number of options to choose from, but I'm simply going to choose edit, a stock standard solid fill, and I'll choose the color dark blue, click OK, and click OK. One more thing I need to show you. There's a quick way of doing this direct from the color palette. If, for example, you simply click once on the color palette with your left mouse, you will change the foreground color. If you right click, if I right click, I can change the fill color. Now this time, when I click and drag and create an ellipse, as you can see, we have a black outline and we have a green fill. It's really quite easy once you get used to it. As with Corel Draw, once we select the Pick tool and choose our object, we can scale horizontally and, of course, vertically stretch our image and move it to any location on the screen. If we click again, we bring up the standard rotation handles, but if we click again, we now have some new handles to work with, distorting the object. So if I click on a handle, I can create some very interesting results by distorting the shape of the object. Click one more time and we can bring up the perspective handles. And these handles allow you to create a sense of perspective on your image. Very handy, I find, when working with bitmap images that you want to give perspective to. Okay, whenever you've finished manipulating, you must either select another tool or as that little circle with the line is telling you, right click and apply your changes. 
The last area we need to spend a little time on is on the object manager. So we'll choose the object manager here. The object manager, similar to Corel Draw, basically shows you all of the objects in the order that generally you have created them unless you change that order. Well as you can see right here I've created this green circle and it appears right there. Well I can increase the size of that by moving this slider along and in fact I'll just quickly move or stretch out sideways the object manager a little more, increase the thumbnails and I'm going to turn on thumbnail extents mode. That allows me to see a close-up of the image rather than the other way is the image relative to the size of the entire area. So we'll turn that on. It's very easy to work with the object manager. As I said, as you create an object, and I'll do that one more time for you, if I click and drag and create another object, you can see it stacks automatically on top as the last object created. If I want to change the order, I'll simply click on the object and I'll pull that object down to where it is that I want it. Well, of course, it's now sitting underneath all of these other objects. As I move it around, you can see it's underneath everything else. Well, that's all for now. In our next video, we'll delve a little deeper and put all of these processes to work.